Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. This man lived alone with his two cats and uh, they don't know how he passed away, but he was unattended or decomposed for at least a couple of weeks uh, to the point where they uh, could not have a normal funeral. So they had to cremate him. But the story uh, was that the police aren't positive that it was a natural death. Unfortunately, the cats were uh, not only walking through the body fluids and the blood, but they were uh, probably eating on him as well. All right, we're here on day one in Gulfport. Might go to a day two. We're gonna try and stick to a day one. Uh, we have an older gentleman. He was 51-ish in that range. Sat here, I'm guessing about six weeks. He kind of liquefied everywhere. The parents are on scene, so I don't know how much talking I'll really be able to do today. Um, but I'll try and show you guys the best parts possible. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. Gotta clean our way in. Uh, the first responders actually walked all throughout the house. They did find some drugs that they, I believe they were looking for more of just to get them off the streets. He was sitting on a like a double recliner, I would say, so we do have to take that apart. Stay tuned, it's going to be great. Hi, I'm Sean Dorn and I'm the Director of Digital Marketing at Spalding Decon. I would say it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but that, mis that smell is unmistakable. That bittersweet smell and it hits you like a wall when you first come in the door. But I mean, obviously it's not bad enough where I have to wear a breather. I've heard of jobs that are way worse than this, but I don't think I was prepared for the, um, to see what happens with a dead body after it's been laying around for a while and seeing the blood in the tile. It's not something I expected. So I'm still kind of taking it in, see how I react to it. I so much death. <laughs> this is the most I've seen in one morning. I worked for hospice for uh, 12 years. And we did, I remember we looked at the numbers once for a one year period, so for 365 days, yeah. and it was like thousands, thousands of deaths that we went through that one year. Wow. Because there were some days we would have like eight, ten deaths, like in a day. In a day? Yeah, wow. and it just like mentally just drained you. Wow. Right? right, so I did hospice, where it was death primarily. Uh, I've done Moffitt, which is saving, mm -hmm. and now... Clean up, clean up. You know, right, I've done full all, end of it's the line. full circle. Right, yeah. 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 Uh, right now I'm setting up a tarp for our clean zone. That way we can get in here and get to work. Oh, shit. Like 98, like it's just sitting. Like I'm sweating in weird places. Does your tits sweat? Like have my... tits sweat? Yes, Damn. they do. <laughs> I didn't expect you to say yes. It's okay, my ball sweat has ball sweat, <laughs> so I'm right there with you. <laughs> He's just showing off now. It's just to get more views. Don't worry about it. <laughs> there we go. Bio. No good. <laughs> Since they're still liquid, we don't want to start pulling up the tile and getting it underneath the tile directly, because right now it's just in the grout lines. Um, there's no telling if it is underneath the tile just yet until we start popping them up. I'm hoping we can just vacuum up the top layer, get all the liquid up, start chipping at it, and then slowly work our way to the couch. Plan of action now, now that I've seen what it's kind of going to do and where it actually is, we vacuumed up the top layer that we've sprayed with part A to try and loosen it and see what else we can pull up with it. So it looks like it all just kind of gravitated that way. It's not so much by the door, but there is some fat deposit there. It's more or less by the wall um, on the back side of the couch from what I can see or from what I see. So we're going to grab the tile chipper. We're going to start at this line of tile right here, work our way to the couch. Um, and then while one of us is working on the couch, slowly dissecting that, the other one is going to work this way. Um, eventually this whole square of tile is going to have to come out. 
Gotta have fun with power tools. We're just in the middle of taking a little break right now. If you, if that's all saturated with fat. Um, if you lean around the corner and look down behind the couch, you can kind of see where it pulls up against the wall. And that's what we're just looking at right here. I'd like to get my spray with some indicator just to see if it lights up or not. I don't see it lighting up. Better watch your knife. Oh. Probably a little bit of bolt. <laughs> Have to break down things like mattresses and recliners and couches. We have to break them down because not all the time is the bio saturated through. So for this instance, it's from maybe midway over, not necessarily all the way down, but it was soaked into the cushion. So we know that we have to remove this half and we'll dispose of the rest into a dump trailer when we get back to the office. And then all the metal, um, since we can't, it's hard to remove that, we can shockwave all that and it's clean and it's not a hard, or it's not a, a porous material. So we can actually just shockwave that and get the bio off of it. You see where it pulled up in the grout line? And how we spread over that. So right now, we're just kind of clearing an area for us to bring out the couch. We have the van parked in the front of the house so nobody can really see what, exactly what we're doing. Um, so we'll put the couch here, we'll be able to flip it over, decon the bottom of it, and then it's mainly tile work until we get to the other couch and then we get to flip that over. We'll probably just bring that outside and see what it looks like. I got it on the first ledge. Should work out for the day? Huh? Yeah. It's my workout for the week. That's my workout for the month. Fuck yo. Alright, just roll it. Yep. I think the cat might have been stuck underneath the couch. Oh shit. <laughs> Alright, so plan of action for this. <laughs> I keep feeling like I have hair on my face and the only hair that's coming in contact could be this and it's yeah. one of us is going to spray this and decon it the rest of the way. The other person is gonna be inside chipping away at the floor a little bit more, trying to get all that up, trying to tag team this and get it done a little bit quicker. Jackson here. Woo! Push. Woo! I couldn't do that. So we're at the end of day one. It did end up turning into a two day job. We got two places that it one went through the grout line, the thick grout line somehow. We also have two spots to get up against the wall where it seemed like it seeped down beneath the baseboard. Uh, we haven't even popped those yet. We're just starting to pack up. It's already getting kind of late. It sounds like it's about to storm too. Other than that, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow goes pretty smooth, pretty quick. See you guys then. All right guys, we're back here on day two. We tried, we tried so hard to get it all done on day one, but alas, it did go under the wall on the main couch side. We still haven't got behind the second one. So today's plan of action, try and get the rest of the floor up, try and get this whole job done today. Stay tuned guys, it's gonna be an interesting day. See like it gives it the possibility to tunnel. Alright, so right now Fiona is finishing cutting off that two foot flood cut. Hopefully it didn't go too far past that the eight foot point. While she was cutting that, I, we rolled over the couch while she took a little break. Um, I started soaking all the bio in part A to try and extract it as much as possible before I start chipping up the tile. 
I want to get all the liquid that's sitting off of the top, whether it be bio or part A mixed together. I want all that off, that way it's not hitting the subfloor. Because so far, nothing has touched the subfloor that I can tell, but there's no telling until we get behind that drywall. So it turns out it's actually plaster, not drywall, like we were told or thought. So over here, it's okay that we did do a two foot, you know, it's all even, it's square. The only difference is over there, we're just not gonna have to do a two foot. It'll be able, we'll be able to do like a six inch over there. Uh, plaster walls don't soak up, soak up things like drywall does. So that's good for us, but also kind of makes us look not the greatest just because we did it over here. Message of the day, learn from your mistakes. So I came by to check on uh, Nick and Fiona on the decomp job, and you can hear the tools in the back. They're still jacking up the tile. But I was able to speak to the family who just came down from the Midwest, and I got kind of the story on what may have happened. So uh, this man lived alone with his two cats, and uh, they don't know how he passed away, but he was unattended or decomposed for at least a couple of weeks uh, to the point where they uh, could not have a normal funeral. So they had to cremate him. But the story uh, was that the police aren't positive that it was a natural death. So they're investigating it and uh, trying to figure out if there was foul play in here. Um, unfortunately, the cats were uh, not only walking through the body fluids and the blood, but they were uh, probably eating on him as well. They were pretty malnourished, uh, but a friend of the family was able to uh, come and take the cats and they're gonna be okay, thank God, right? So uh, right now they, they can't even uh, do much with the property. They can't get his, his personal stuff because it's still being investigated as a homicide. So that's kind of what's going on now. This is uh, day two of this project. It's gonna probably go into a day three. This is not normal ceramic tile. It's saltillo, so it's extremely thick stuff. It's really hard to get up, uh, very labor intensive. And then the house is pretty old too, so we've got plaster walls, and you know that's a, a takes a lot more time and effort to remove than drywall does. So then we did the first one, and he was like, "All right, Fee." We forgot the ramps yesterday too. Oh, so yeah. he was like, "All right, Fee, you push, and I'm pulling." I'm like, "I can push." <laughs> <laughs> and I push, and he was just like, "Wedge." He's like, oh, "Pull it, pull it." Yeah. Hey, this stuff is thick. Yeah. Wow. You just enjoy getting, it's not close up either, is it? Because you have that wide lens. It was close. It was? I don't know how I feel about that. So what we're about to do now, now that we've already chipped a nice clean line on the floor, uh, we're gonna take out the parts that aren't covered in bio, throw those in a black bag outside after we smash them into smaller pieces. Over in this little corner, we're gonna have mainly bio. This is mainly what it is. All that's gonna go into a red bag, which is gonna go into the bin. Third project over here, we're trying to cut out the beams. That way we can scrub, seal, get all the bio encapsulated and not actively living anymore. Also got another little addition to our little team here today. Alex has finally joined us. Um, she's gonna be sticking to more of the trash side. Um, Fiona has also been working in the kitchen and the sunroom in the back, wiping off all the cat puke because the cats were in here. Just have to wipe up all the puke, wipe the walls down, all with simple green to disinfect it. So that's our plan. Should be fun. It just stopped. Damn, this mop. How hot did that get? Hot enough that it started to. seemed like it started to uh, catch on fire. All right guys, we're at the end of day two. We were actually gonna stretch it out to day three, but things were going, were going better than we had thought and better than we had planned. So we instead just decided to bust it out, get it all done today. We had Alex join us about lunch time, slightly after when she started to join us. So that extra hand really, or extra two hands, should I say, really helped us out and speed things up a little bit. So that's the end of day two, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations.
that's it guys on to the next